Hello everyone, it's episode 289 of Aussie Tech Heads weekly Thursday nights at around about 7.30 kickoff pre-show normally and the, and the show normally starts at probably, I don't know, 7.40, 8 o'clock, whatever takes your fancy. But anyway, if you don't want to uh, tune in for the, the pre-show, you can always just download it on the iTunes. Way to go, way to go people. Uh, lounge, hi lounge, live.thesecrethub.com if you do decide to join us live, uh, join us in the lounge where you all sit back, relax and have a chat. Uh, Skype in if you want to. Skype is uh, Skype audio is Aussie Tech Heads if you want to call us through the show. But uh, just keep calling because I've got to be watching the computer to <laughs> see it jumping up and down. <laughs> uh, lo- and also live.thesecrethub.com is where you can find the live show, youtube.com forward slash the secret hub. And tonight we're also trialing because uh, it was released uh, this week. Ooh. Someone died on Skype. Sorry. It was um, released this week, if not early, late this week. Uh, the uh, Google Hangout uh, live streaming to the Hangout to the YouTube. So we're just giving that a bit of a shot tonight, see how that goes. So in the lounge, if anyone's out there that want to tune in and give it a give it a review, so the quality and so forth, um, please do. Please do. Two editions a day, paper.aussietechheads.com.au. And uh, tonight, we are welcomed, we welcome Will. How you going, Will? How you doing, guys? Glenn, guys in the lounge, listeners, viewers. Good. Queen, Prince Good. Of Denmark. Yeah, oh, Prince of Denmark. I haven't seen him for a while. <laughs> now, um, what's uh, going on yeah, this sorry. week? Sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm waffling tonight. I'm dog tired, so this could oh, be an interesting look, show. Yeah, who, who isn't, I tell you. <laughs> I, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit the same way myself. But anyway, we, we're going to keep going. So, uh, so no, Eric tonight. Maybe a little bit later. He's uh, he's got some uh, things going on. Uh, family dinner or some something like that. So yum yum. Hope he's having a shank or two. And yeah, so he might join us later on. We'll see how it goes. Uh, what else is going on? What else have I got to cover in the in the in the opening stanza? Uh, the radio is in the process of being sorted. Um, yes, I actually did a bit of a contribution to the radio today, which which you're not you haven't seen yet. But if you want to have a look at it, you could go to aussietechheads.com.au forward slash radio forward slash radio dot HTML. Wow, really? Yeah, (laughs) nothing flash. (laughs) Well, it is flash, actually. (laughs) It is flash. So, uh, but that's probably, I'm just trying to trialing a little player to be used. So when you do hit the radio, the radio dot radio.thesecrethub.com, you'll get straight into the, the radio stream without downloading a playlist. So that is coming very, very soon, probably over the weekend. I'll, I'll put that up on the, the radio site, so it's just easier to get into, I guess. So, uh, yep. so if, you, um, if you've got a... I've just got to get off my backside and finish updating all that from this end. I'm actually in email discussions with the, uh, the server at the moment because I'm having issues... Uploading new shows, they go up, they go into the playlist, and they don't actually play. So, oh, that's no good. Why is that? You don't know. That's what you're mm. asking. Uh, apparently, like. some no. Apparently, one of their servers crashed or something, and their backup didn't back up properly. Or I don't know. Every time I ask them, it's a different excuse. So, mm. we'll see how it goes. Mm. <laughs> well, um, yeah. So anyway, so I'm, um, uh, yeah. Let's let's get that sorted because the the flash player will be up shortly. And sure. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So what else is going on? Um, not too much. Been a bit of an easy week this week. Had a Monday Queensland holiday in Queensland, Labor Day. So a short week for us. Yep. So that was good. You didn't have to work. Not not, not so good of us who are casual, but you know, no. this this time of year for casual workers from Christmas until you know the, what is it another fortnight and it's our next one is absolutely horrible in Queensland because they decided to put all the holidays in the first four months of the year. <laughs> I know because we had Anzac Day short week, and then we had a Labor Day short week. So it was all, all, all within was, like two weeks. It was good. And then we've got yeah, you know, but in most other states, there's the sort of spread out a bit more. But but yes, yes. well this so year that was fun. Well this year we get two um, queens ho- queen holiday birthdays. So that, yeah, you gotta June lo- you gotta and love that. August or something. That's right because they're not getting rid of. Oh my mic fell down. <laughs> Everything's that? suffering from uh, droopage tonight. Oh, no, I'm not, not sure. Well, that's <laughs> all. Oh, no, that isn't that better. Uh, yeah, so anyway, if you want to contact us, you can call, or well, you can call Aussie Tech Heads, or you can uh, 
email Glenn, Will, or Eric at AussieTechHeads.com.au. Get Eric on the Twitter, Mr. at Mr. Tomkinson, Eric at Eric with a K, Franco, and me at Aussie Tech Heads, of course. And also techwebcast.info before the show, 7 o'clock every Thursday, replay of their show with great guests every single week of the year. So tune in. I kid oak. Let's get some stories underway. You ready Alrighty. for those? Yeah. yeah. Now, oh, ready. I grabbed the story out today. Now, I saw you playing it in the with the lounge just before. Will, Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein, three. Yep. There we go. Th- 20th anniversary. Now, I don't know if it is it 20. So, what's that? 2012. So, what's that make it? 1992. Oh, that's, that's, that's not the 20th anniversary. Oh, it's Wolfenstein 3D. Th- that's the 20th anniversary. Yeah. Yes. So It's uh, the first multi-point two-dimensional game um prior to this was ken's labyrinth um which makes this look like a really modern game (laughs) so yeah so look wolfenstein look i remember playing the wolfenstein on the apple II, which i loved you know i loved it Uh, it was great i couldn't get enough of it my favorite game then yeah look i played this a little bit but uh didn't really get too far because i think uh, around about this stage didn't duke nukem come out and, uh, uh duke nukem come out about in 94 95 right um but you're right i mean once well actually doom came out about six months later than this i think or talk i know doom came out in doom came out before duke so duke doom must have come out not long after this hmm. um which is evident actually because in this in Wolfenstein, there's actually a hidden... Sorry, in um, Doom, there's actually three hidden Wolfenstein levels. Yeah, okay. So. All right. <laughs> yeah, so... But anyway, so what? What? So happy birthday. Who cares? Well, you might, because they've, they've got a free online game. So the 20th Which anniversary, the right they're celebrating in style by offering seasoned veterans and curious youngsters alike the chance to play Wolfenstein 3D online for free. If you, um, I'll give you the web page, but just go to the show notes. Show notes always at aussietechheads.com.au website. But uh, the the actual link is wolfenstein.bethsoft.com. So go get that one. Which uh, Bethsoft is the mob that took over ID, I think, from memory. Right. And because, for- um, Doom, Doom and Wolfenstein were originally ID games, weren't they? Oh, I don't know. I've got no idea. <laughs> no idea. But uh, for a limited time, which I grabbed mine today, iOS users can download Wolfenstein 3D Classic Platinum for free on the iTunes. So just search Wolfenstein on the iTunes, download your Platinum version for free. Now, I did that today, as I said. I played it, and I'll tell you, my goodness, is it hard to control a game <laughs> with the, the on screen? With, yeah, the on screen control thing. Like, you can't. I, oh, geez, it was hard. I couldn't line up my first kill. Probably. Yeah. I got killed. That's I was the, the first kill. That's the thing. Um, with the Android phones, um, the Wolfenstein, Doom, Juke, they've been available for a while, but they're so hard to play for the same reason. Mm. It's just the, you know. Remember a few it, episodes uh, ago, and it was, I think, uh, one of the guys in the lounge, the Chalks, the dude in the lounge, he put me onto, and I think we mentioned it and showed it, the little the sucker joystick that you clip onto yep. your iPad screen from Logitech, wasn't it? And that was wasn't too dear. It was it was quite good. So after after playing the um yeah, after playing with the on touch screen thing, geez. Um uh <laughs> you know, I'd have to get one. I was hopeless. Absolutely yeah. hopeless. I remember like not so much Wolfenstein, but around this time was the start of the uh the whole game on you know, f- lane game revolution because you had Rise of the Triad, you had Duke Nukem three D, you had Doom, you had Doom Two, you had uh, Heretic and Hexen and Blood and all these games that all come out about the same time that were all, you know, 3D land playable mm. games. It was, it was it was the start of the land parties that are still going strong today. I mean, these days you get that, thousands of participants, but back then, you know, well, we have someone's a, someone's yeah. house, four or five mates, computers, you know. <laughs> well, there's a local land party going on on the 10th. That's tonight, actually. Tonight at the, the JB Hi-Fi Rabina versus JB Hi-Fi Pacific Fair. So, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yes. So, gone, are the day, gone are the days where you've got to 
dig out the old roll of BNC cable and run your T connectors and your terminators. That's and... right. Make sure it's in a loop. <laughs> <laughs> These days you rock up. Wi-Fi if it's a low-res game, high-res, plug into the LAN, done. Mm, yep, yep, yep. But, um, yeah, so so they, that's, they, they're going strong over there. But get your free little uh, iTunes game, Wolfenstein Platinum. So why not, eh? Yeah. Why not? Why not? Now, get, now you, I think you'll have – probably you're right on something like the iPad that's a bigger screen. Yeah, but still, it's hard to control. You'd have to oh, – you know, well, I've only had one game, admittedly. But, um, yeah. Can you use uh, Bluetooth keyboards? Uh, well, I, no, I don't, but I think you can. Yes, you can. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder if that would be usable. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Google. Oh, hello, Google Plus viewers. How are you going? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've just seen that there's a few viewers going on. So Sweet. Yeah, next story, next story. You could be fired for liking a Facebook page. Now, I, don't, I didn't like this story, to tell you yeah. the, the God's honest truth. Didn't like it at all. Now, what? so what's happened is... Um, yeah, six workers in the US were fired for liking the Facebook of the Facebook page of their boss's political opponent after a federal judge ruled that the clicking the like button is not constitutionally protected speech. Now, I don't like this at all. People now this is the uh, a lawyer, Sydney based from the law firm Holman Webb. Uh, people don't go to the pub and talk to a few mates anymore. They get on a computer and talk to ten million people. So they need to be that much more careful. So which is, which is probably true, but uh, that's not what I am sort of object, objecting to. Now, there's another one in the case of the U.S. Sheriff B.J. Roberts of Hampton, Virginia, fired six of his staff members for liking the Facebook page of his running opponent in the 09 election. He said that their actions actions had hindered the harmony and efficiency of the office. The staff members sued claiming that the First Amendment right had been violated. However, Judge Raymond A. Jackson of the Federal District Court said in his ruling that clicking the like button did not amount to expressive speech. Essentially, because there was no actual writing or speech involved, the act of clicking a button is not afforded constitu constitutional protection under the ruling. Well, stuff it anyway, because we don't have the same thing over here. But what I was going to say to that, Will, and see if, if, see if you agree, but my... my uh, my comeback, if I was one of those staff members that got fired, my comeback was going to be, well, I wanted to see what this guy was up to. So the only way to see what he's up to is to like it, to get the, get his posts, you know, in your line. Yeah, look, I think, I think ruling, the, the biggest problem with a ruling like this, and okay, it happened in the US, not here, but what happens in the US seems to trickle through to other countries. Now, as you say, in the one hand, you know, liking something is quite often the only way to view it or to see it or to follow what's going on because it updates you. Um, but the fact that this guy's saying, you know, that go to any computer and talk to 10 million people, well, I guess there is a minority out there who can do that. The average person who likes something on Facebook, uh, it gets lost in the noise very, very quickly. Hmm. Well, the chances of it, anybody else knowing about it is is slim. Um, yeah, which is but yeah. the thing that I find, you know, is it not freedom of expression? You you know, you're expressing your opinion, regardless of whether it's, you know, down the pub with some mates, regardless of whether it's on the street corner on a soapbox, whether it's you know, what we're doing right now through social social media and and um, you know podcasting and. It, at the end of the day, you're expressing your opinion and it shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't be yeah, it's boxed, true. It's you know, segmented. When you express hmm. your opinion, it's your opinion, it's freedom of your opinion, hmm. you should be able to do whatever I think, you want. You know? Yeah, and I think like, so these six workers are liking this page, uh, well, obviously in their personal time, like this is what, you know, in their, this is their own belief, like, you know, they might work for the guy, but still doesn't mean they're going to vote for him. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, chances are they're going to, but, um, but yeah, look, I, I just find it, I, mean, I didn't it, like it. It'd probably be different if it was something like, you know, they like the uh, Devil Worshippers and, and Child Molesters Association. You know, yeah. something like that. Hmm. Okay, fine. That might be a breach of company policy. Yeah. But, you know, something as stupid as this. No, no, it is stupid. It really is just... 
That, that's what. That's it's just stupid. That's all there is to it. <laughs> that's right. So we'll call that story stupid, and we'll <laughs> and we'll move on. <laughs> So uh, stupid, yeah, so, stupid story. So you can, you guys can suggest stories if you like that you come across as well through the week. Um, that story was suggested by Milo, so thanks, Milo. Howdy doody. Uh, yes, now Google Plus Hangouts uh, on air feature goes public. Now we're actually using this this week on the show. <coughs> see how it runs. I think it's running pretty smooth so far, so good. Um, Google has announced that its Hangout on air feature is now live. So it has been a closed invite only uh, system up until now. Um, allowing users to mm-hmm. broadcast themselves to other Google Plus and YouTube users live across the web. Now, that is a, a, a probably a big one as well. So you're actually going live into your YouTube account as well. Mm. So not only in the Google Plus sc- stream, but also through the YouTube, which is pretty cool. And, I, and as I noticed before, uh, even if you're not on Google Plus, if you're on YouTube and you subscribe to uh, Aussie Tech Head's channel, then when we went live, it actually sent me a notification and sent me an email because it was live. And when I or went to my uh, YouTube page, it also had featured live broadcasts from Secret Hub. So I think you watch the uh, search in what's it SEO, search engine optimization. Hmm. You watch people figuring out how to work that, uh, so that when they people type things into YouTube and Google Plus, they're going to be getting hits. Hmm. So did you say that it actually came onto the in the, in, but it's it, that just appears under my Google Plus stream at the moment, I think. Under your Google Plus stream and also yeah. under your YouTube yeah, the secret uh, username. Yes. So if I follow you on Google Plus or on YouTube or any account like Twitter, for example, that you've got locked into YouTube so that mm. when it updates, it automatically tweets as well. So Now, another good handy little feature about that is about it going into YouTube is that it will actually re- it actually records it and makes it available mm. as a recording on YouTube for later viewing, which you know, which which is going to save a lot of time. And once I get it sorted, well, I'll just do that, and then I won't have all, all this like you know post production and editing uh, to get the and uploading, and then tr- and then for YouTube to transcode it or encode it, re-encode it into whatever it wants it wants it in. So well, there's going to be a lot of time saved. I think that's a that's a boom. Good. But as you were saying, the biggest problem at the mo- well, with it at the moment at least, and <laughs> it's a Google product that's still in beta, who would have thought? <laughs> um, <laughs> the biggest problem at the moment is it records everything. So if you, for those who aren't familiar with a Google Hangout, you get uh, a normal Skype-style video interface, but you also get two windows down the bottom uh, or multiple windows down the bottom. You get one of your camera and you get one of every subsequent user. At the moment, the way it's set up uh, is that it records that whole screen. So you're not recording a polished product. So it might be good to get it up quickly as a stopgap. And then once you, I guess, get your post-production done and upload that, you can take the Hangout one down. Mm. Yeah, that's right. So, But I think they'll, they'll refine all that. And uh, yeah, Google Plus Live and Live in the YouTube. Ooh, who'd have thought? It's a good, good way to uh, see the behind the scenes that we don't normally record. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because when I do the edit, uh, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> it looks smooth and professional oh, and doesn't slick. It? Well, Absolutely well. nothing like the show really is. <laughs> Same with the audio. <laughs> so features yeah. include uh, being able to see how many people are watching your live stream as well as the ability to upload a recording to YouTube, which we've already discussed. Um, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, Google Google Plus, it's... um. So that's obviously left Facebook behind a little bit. There's no live streaming into Facebook yet, as far as I know. Well, they tried it. Uh, I've actually, I've, I've played with it a couple of times. Um, YouTube have this fantastic, uh, sorry, Facebook have this fantastic ability to completely destroy a video quality. <laughs> yeah, Facebook does, did you say? Facebook, yeah. Oh. I've, I've put a video, 720p video streamed, wow. Well, yeah, near enough. No, sorry, uh, widescreen video streamed up mm. and it's cropped it back to 6x4 and degraded the quality to like 320 by 240 So, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> oh, good on you, Facey. Now, um, now well, let's, let, we'll go over to, to the, uh, let's go to iPhone 5 launch date leaked. There's so many rumours about all this stuff, isn't there? It's, um, Before you, I just have to find it fascinating now that Jobsy 
well, he's died, but, you know, his security measures that he had where nothing really ever leaked up until the last couple of years mm. you know and now nothing it, it's almost a surprise if you get new information at a launch <laughs> or something yeah so the so the iphone iphone uh five date has been leaked it seems fair income doesn't it? it seems plausible that it uh, will go on sale in september with the expected announcement at the apple wwdc on june the 11th now, Pentagon, an Apple manufacturer, has received orders for the new iPhone 5 with a launch date of September. The new fi- iPhone is expected to be shown in June at the, uh, at the uh, yeah, WWDC event. The Worldwide so. Developers Conference. Mm. Now, speaking of Apple, I don't, know, I don't know if you caught the show on the ABC last week. Uh, Steve Jobs, a billion... I watched, the, I watched a bit on... Uh, what is it? The iView, I, the iPlayer, iView. Yeah, I watched a little bit on that. Oh, actually, I actually watched it today off iView, and it was, um, yeah, it was okay. It was okay. And uh, next week, or well, tonight actually, tonight is uh, a Facebook Mark Zuckerberg documentary. So watch out for that one on iView as well. But that's on tonight as well, nine o'clock, I think it was something like that. So yeah, you can go go and have a look at that if you're interested. But yeah, that iView, like, oh geez, I've been I watched that on the Xbox. You know, mm. it's, it's great. It's great. I was a bit, a bit uh, surprised I couldn't get like Channel Nine catch-up shows off the Xbox from an Xbox app, but them's the breaks. I can watch most of those on my Android phone too, which is pretty neat. Yeah, that's all right. So while while you're out and about, you can mm. you can stream them. I mean, you can be a little bit careful still with data. The amount of data you use it will catch up with you pretty quickly if you do things like that <laughs> on three G. <3G. laughs> Oh, oh yeah, three G. You, you'd be in a you'd be in a four G catchment area, wouldn't you, Will? Or up 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 market Ipswich? No, no. no. Uh, oh. not yet. Not, I don't think so. Maybe the middle of Ipswich is. Um, I know a couple of people who have a four G phone, and I think they probably average about I don't know ten or fifteen minutes a day that they're actually on it in the middle of the city. So yeah, right. Mm. <laughs> Uh, At the moment, it's still a bit ordinary. Now, PC users, you might want to check your little updates this week. Or on Tuesday, Microsoft has issued seven security bulletins for Patch Tuesday, with three rated critical, and the other four are rated important. They're all important. Go go on, update. The seven combined addresses 23 separate vulnerabilities impacting on Microsoft Windows, Office, Silverlight, and the Net Framework. So uh, go go and plan your upgrade party as soon as you can. The uh, vulnerability yeah. can result in a remote code execution, elevation of privilege, or denial of service. Just about every patch is a remote code execution and elevation of privilege. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, did they leave the code open, every line of code open at some point? Yeah, probably. You know. <laughs> but but um, I've got a laptop that... It only gets used occasionally, but it's a, because it's only a netbook, I've turned updates off. Mm. And two years later, that thing is running as fast as it was the day I installed it. I've got a media center out there that I installed three months ago and I've put every update on before and up to current now. And the thing is that slow that it won't play standard def movies anymore. No, oh, yeah. So Do something about that. Within three months, it's gone from you know, the amount of crap that's gone on it. So I think depending on what you're using your system for is depending on whether or not you should update your system. Oh, um, look, no, I, I, I would say, I would not say that. <laughs> I would say good well, update. I mean, the average person, yes, you should. But in the situation like that system out there only gets used as a media centre. I, you know, I can't, I'm actually going to format it and not let it all update. There's a, there's a handful of critical patches that, I'm going to let it have that I know can cause problem, you know, really bad problems. But mm. <sighs> yeah. I mean, it's a, it sits there and plays movies. That's all it does. <laughs> well, look, I've got a, I've got a media center as well, the Windows Media Center, and it just auto updates whenever it feels like it. It's um, yeah, it, it's been going strong for oh probably a year now since I since that's the machine I built. I did the video uh, that I built. That's me. You, that's me. Um, media center. But anyway, this MS one two zero three four. 
is the largest security bulletin I've seen Microsoft put out. Jason Miller, Miller Research and Development Manager at VMware. Ooh. The sheer size of this thing is immense because they are covering a lot of products and a lot of operating systems. There are about 120 types of product service packs combinations where this patch would be applicable. And there are 39 different patches associated with this one bulletin. So this is going to be all over the network. Pretty much all of your machines are going to be involved. So um, mm. do, your, do your machines a favour and uh, go, so go update. took a couple of friends of mine who are paying ridiculous amounts for their 500 meg uh, Telstra satellite. Don't get this. <laughs> <laughs> it will pretty much max out your cap in one hit. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I doubt I had a, an Apple update on the Lion update today. Seven hundred ninety-four meg. Yeah. So um, huge, huge. But well, Apple. Give, I mean, that's part of the problem. We're still. This country is still far behind, and there are still five hundred meg. There's still a two hundred and fifty meg internet plan. You know, like that's. My emails are more than that a month. So mm, yeah, yeah, that's a bit crazy. Apple today though uh, unleashed iOS 5.1.1. Um, I updated mine today, the latest version of the iOS operating system. Also, yeah, the large update, as I said, for the OS X line, 729.6 meg. It was on mine, so I guess that's virtually nearly the same. The 5.1.1 update improves of the iOS improves the reliability of HDR photos when you're using the lock screen shortcut. <laughs> Fixes bugs that were affecting airplay video playback. Oh, good. Fixes bugs <laughs> preventing... <laughs> oh, how good at airplay? There you go. That airplay is just yeah, the, best, the best thing. Like, why couldn't Microsoft get their DLNA or what a DNLA or whatever the hell it is called, why couldn't they get that working properly like this thing? This is great. I can't... Do you know with, that D, with the Microsoft, like, yeah, that D... What is it? DNLA or DLNA will only work, you can only send your video to another Microsoft or Windows machine, you can only send it if that machine's got the media player open. So so this is as far as I've worked useful. out. Yeah, so, so even though I can't send a, a video to the media centre because media centre's open. It's got to be media player. So, That's unless, ridiculous. Unless they've changed it. I, look, I give up about oh quite a while ago after I had a go at it. But yeah, so fixes bugs preventing you from switching between 2G and 3G networks on the new iPad, improves the reliability of syncing Safari bookmarks and your reading list, and finally fixes a problem where you were given an unable to purchase message after buying something. Apple is expected to release a larger update at its <laughs> worldwide developer conference in June. Well, it's obviously not important if they, you know, <laughs> it's obviously not important if they're going to wait till June. It's probably, probably their Adobe patch. Yeah. <laughs> probably <laughs> probably um, I can't believe that's still an exploit that's ridiculous yeah yeah pretty crazy now um, oh, I don't know do you want to do an MBN story did you have any stories Will um, I should have asked I did have a few and then I looked at your show notes and <laughs> they were no. pretty much the same that you had so <laughs> yeah, it wasn't too much like we were differing stuff going on this week I didn't I think no. it was just all pretty much the same. Uh, I've got, well, I'll do this MBN one uh, when, when I find it. Come on. The federal government uh, pours millions of dollars into ads for the MBN. I saw one tonight. Uh, I haven't seen them yet, no, but I'm going to have a look on YouTube because I'm sure they're there. The, the, one the I uh, saw was 2012 on... 2013 budget, which, as we all know, is a huge success, allocated $20 million of spending in the current financial year. Um, to improve public understanding, address misconceptions, and provide updated information about the national broadband network, with specific emphasis emphasis on audiences in regional and rural Australia. The government-owned company has gone into extremes of booking advertisements um, and on talkback radio, not talkback tech, uh, only to pull them when announcers took to criticising the company on air. Uh, and they had a $9 billion deal with Telstra, including a clause obligating the network wholesale to provide a public information campaign to the Look, network. I, so basically they're spending more money on advertising than they are on the actual network. No, $20 million. <laughs> But yeah, look, look, well, it is only a, a small fraction of the actual cost of the network, isn't it? $20 million against $40, $50 yeah. billion. 
But, um, well, I don't know, 20 million, you serious? Like, well, I saw an ad tonight just before, as I was lo- logging into the live stream tonight, you know, saw an NBN ad come up. So, um, okay. they're out there. I they're mean, out there. Yeah. I mean, the problem is $20 million, it's either too much or not enough. Like, $20 million, if the ads aren't done properly, is just a waste of money. But if they're ads that are done properly and, and they want proper coverage, $20 million isn't enough. So mm. they, they've basically wasted $20 million because that's not going to buy them. I mean, it'll buy them decent online ads, I guess, like as you said, you know, on the start of the stream and things like that. But, but it what, won't buy them, you know, TV ads. But what I don't time. understand, and like maybe I just don't understand the NBN at all, <laughs> what I don't understand... you're not the only one. <laughs> is that <laughs> I thought that, that the, the NBN was going to be... The internet, right, in Australia. That is, everyone is going to get, uh, unless you're wireless, but everyone is going to get their internet from the MBN. The carrier. It'll be the carrier. Right. Why advertise a monopoly? Like... Because, it's, because it can't be a monopoly, it must be an open network. So even though the NBN infrastructure uh, will be the backbone, it will still be sold off the same way that, you know, ADSL sold to different companies now. Yes, but, but the different companies, let them do the advertising. They're the ones that are reselling it. Like, like, like me and you won't have a choice to use MBN or Telstra because Telstra will be getting it from the MBN. Yeah, I see what you mean. I think they're, they're trying to. The reason they're trying to do it they're is trying they're to trying sell to justify their, their. Yeah, they're trying to sell their policy. They're trying to sell the the idea. I, I'd say, yeah, yeah. Which I suppose yeah, they're trying to justify the fact that they've thrown nine billion dollars down the drain so far. You know, and this is the problem. They've had all these rollouts and all these trials, and there's been no uptake. And they wonder why there's no uptake. It's because nobody knows about it. Mm. No, but <laughs> and the, the people that do know about it refuse to pay the stupid amount of money they want. Yeah, but once it's all implemented, that's what I mean. It'll all be coming from yeah. them, so there'll be different plans. But it's even the lowest plan is still going to come from the MBN. But uh, yeah, but I, I th- I'd say it's as you as you said, it's uh, it's more of an awareness thing to to justify mm. the spending of it and to say, hey, this is good. But you see, there was yeah, where did I see? It? I, I read somewhere it was in the now. This was where it got a bit strange. I thought it was in the budget that there's going to be a trial of like fifty fifty a video conference of fifty people or something. It's going to be a trial of fifty people hooked up on the MBN. It was in it was in the budget, but it doesn't cost anything. Like it's an opt in, it's, it's voluntary. It doesn't cost anything. So why is that in the budget? But what's that supposed to achieve? I don't know. It must be just to make a, another awareness thing. Try to make it aware. We used to have a T one line at uni at uh, TAFE that could do that. So I don't really understand. Yeah, just <laughs> you know, if you're going to show off a product, you've got to show it off in a new and unique and fascinating way that actually make people interested not people sit there and go what was the point of that is that like the way that samsung has not offered their samsung galaxy s3 to australia's to australians samsung uh, <laughs> samsung George not, living in australia right? oh look not that i really care about you know i don't like my <laughs> samsung one but uh samsung galaxy s3 smartphone will not arrive in australia any time in the near future according to the phone maker announcing the launch of the smartphone and its availability in global markets including asia uh, which usually encompasses us down here in australia the, the arse of the world samsung australia says the phone will not make it to aussie shores at the same time so who knows why it's probably just something to do with the frequencies in it it's not unusual that we don't get phones or we get a variation on a phone. Um, I mean, look at the original, you know, look at the iPhones. Yeah, true. Up, up and, you know, the first couple will behind and mainly that was to do with either contract negotiations or slight tweaking to the, the firmware or the hardware in the phone to make it work here. Mm. Um, another part of the reason probably is because they haven't figured out how much crapware they want to put on it yet. Probably. Geez, that counts with it, doesn't it? Counts with it. Well, I'll be happy in September. Get the uh, the iPhone if it comes out. That'd be good. Now, you give me one. Give me one too if you want. Oh yeah, no worries. I'll get one. I'll get one for each pocket as well. One for each ear. <laughs> I'll use one. I just won't pay for one. Now uh, we've got Garth back again this week. He's got another little iPhone app or iPad app, iOS app. He, he's on fire, isn't he, Garth, with his little his little reviews. 
So uh, you can see Garth's reviews uh, by their individuality, if you like, rather than going through the whole show. If you like Garth's reviews, they're on the YouTube or they're on the AussieTechheads.com.au website. Just go up to the show tab and come down under iOS reviews and just watch the review by itself. Uh, if you if you uh, like it that much and you think you might have missed something, you can uh, replay it. Good stuff. All right, now let's see what Garth's got for us this week. I hope it's something good, Garth. Yo, Glenn and Garth here once again. And Garth comes along every week and gives us his insight into iOS apps that he uses or iOS apps that he has that he likes. And this okay. week, Garth, welcome once again. What have you got? Thank you, sir. Tonight we have Tweetlist. So there's a myriad... Well, there's a myriad of all apps, really, isn't there? Yeah, there is. But there is a myriad of tweet, tweet apps. Twi- yeah. Tweet? Twitter? Twitter <laughs> apps. Twitter. We'll have old Leo complaining about it being called Tweet again. Tweet. Oh, yes, yes. But um, yeah. no, there's a, there's a heap of these different apps. But Tweetlist is the, the Twitter client that I'm, that I'm loving at the moment. Yeah. Um, if you're into Twitter a little bit, you'll know that you can set up lists. Um, tweet list let you manage the list really nicely straight off your phone nice um it even if you're not into the to, to actual setting up lists in your tweet stream twitter stream it um it's a good client anyway um it's a, it's a free app um i think i've paid a couple of bucks to get rid of the ads as well oh yeah same sort of thing as you know a lot of these Most apps things. do yep. yeah um and it's once again if it's an app that look with all of these apps if it's an app you like a word for the developers. If it's an app you like and pay the couple of bucks, get rid of the ads, yeah. show a bit of support for the for the developer. Well, that's right. Like at the end yeah. of the day, like, is two bucks going to kill you? No, it's not. No, no. that's right. Oh, so. I think sometimes they might make more money out of the ads, actually. <laughs> I don't know. but um. <laughs> Yeah, they possibly could do too. <laughs> but, hey, this is the, for, for making for, – as a, as a replacement for the, um, the Twitter client that comes with the iPhone now, um, it's more built into the iPhone. So there is a st- there's a standard one, stocky standard. There is a stock standard. Wow. So um, Twitter themselves bought out, oh, they bought one of the apps, like bought out the the company. Yeah, right. And um, when Apple incorporated Twitter into the iPhone, um, you don't. It's not automatically loaded onto your phone like an app like um, the music app and all the other ones are. Yeah. But if you go into your iPod, your iPhone settings. Um, there's a link right from in the settings to actually set up your your Twitter handles. Right, right. in there, yeah. and it will also download that app for you. The the actual official Twitter app. Right. I so, um, but you know, having said that, there's still a lot of other Twitter apps out there that you can use to to do your twittering mm. um, or your tweeting. So this one, yeah. So it's it's got dark and light themes. I know everyone wants that. Yeah. Uh, multiple accounts. So yeah, it lets you manage multiple accounts. Yeah. Um, Push but, notifications. Double yep. tap and tap and hold shortcuts on tweets. Mm-hmm. Uh, hashtags, obviously. Client muting. Voice over accessibility. Mm-hmm. Uh, landscape mode. Whoa, yeah, baby. That's what we want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tweet longer support. Oh, that's good. good yeah. Tweet longer, yeah. yeah. I think, um, look, I've been using TweetDeck of late, and I think yep. some of these functionalities are, have disappeared from TweetDeck so, since uh, Twitter took over. but um, Yeah, Twitter sort of cut down on, a bit of the, on the developers a little bit on what they can and can't do. Oh, but, um, right. yeah, that's not yeah, good. Yeah, since they're, I, I guess they're trying to take a lot more of it under their own control again after, mm. I mean, they initially made it such an open platform and let everyone do whatever they wanted to and now they're sort of yeah. putting the screws on again. Yeah, okay, right, um, right. Getting a bit of control back themselves. Yeah. So you've got, uh, look, I think I use on my iPad, I use a thing called, oh, geez, I can't, I, you, on the spot, you put myself on the Twitter spot. Twitterific? No, Ecfon or something. Echo phone? Yeah, EC. H-F-O-N-E or something? Yeah, I think it, I think you, yeah, it might be Echophone. Echophone? Yeah, so, but I, I like yeah. that one. Look, I'll Yeah, it's a nice one too. Yeah, yeah if anyone... There's a lot of them out there. Yeah, if anyone wants to know, they can uh, yeah, email me. But uh, yeah, so tweet... What is it? Tweet? Late? Tweet list. Tweet list. Yeah. yeah, good stuff. So it's a great one for... Yeah, especially for the guys who like using lists. Yeah. Because it'll let you manage those, set them up. You can you can set them up from scratch right from through the app. Yeah. Now, uh, yes, now you can get Garth at, at on Twitter even at... You could at... Garth underscore hum. That H-U-M. would be me. And, uh, yeah, so you can actually see Garth's videos on the Aussie Tech Ed site as well. So yep. good stuff. Thanks, Bye. Garth. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Whoa, that was Garth. Thanks very much, Garth. 
Well done. So Garth will be back hopefully next week uh, with some more. He goes all right, young Garth. Um, Rightio. So half full, three quarters of the way through the show. Uh, no Eric tonight, so no Audible uh, review. But uh, if you want to, you know what Audible's all about. No, I'm in. Have you got one? Oh yeah, I have one. If you <laughs> if you wish me to I've, do it, I've just started read or oh, well, listening, whatever you want. I've just started listening to one. My mind will do my first audible review pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, what what have you? <laughs> oh, Eric All takes right, a, the Eric takes the limelight. <laughs> <laughs> the one I've uh, been listening to for the last few weeks is um, one of Stephen Fry. Is you know. Can be he's he's got a weird sense of humour, you know. You either like it or you yeah, don't. Yeah, I like it. I don't mind. Yeah, I quite like his stuff. Um, his first book was called Mo- Moab is my wash pot. Uh, was his first autobiography. The second one is called A Fry Chronicle. He sort of split them up into like you know major periods of his life. So the first one's up until he's like seventeen. This one's from the time he's like seventeen till thirty. So, um. They're really interesting. He really has an interesting way of of stating obvious things, but he does it in such an unusual manner. But I'll play a quick uh, a quick snippet of it anyway. All right. And uh, he narrates his own stuff, of course, which helps. He must stop saying sorry. It doesn't make things any better or worse. If only I had it in me to be all fierce, fearless and forthright, instead of forever sprinkling my discourse with pitiful retractions, apologies and prevarications. It's one of the reasons I could never have been an artist, either of a literary or any other kind. All the true artists I know are uninterested in the opinion of the world and wholly unconcerned with self-explanation. Self-revelation, yes, and often, but never self-explanation. Artists are strong, bloody-minded, difficult, and dangerous. Fate, or laziness, or cowardice, cast me long ago in the role of entertainer. And that is what I found myself throughout my twenties becoming, though at times a fatally over-earnest, over-appeasing one, which is no kind of entertainer at all, of course. One... He did... Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. He did a, uh, a show that I liked. He toured America. That's been shown on the ABC. Yep. I don't know if you caught that one, but that was really good. Uh, I can't think what that was called, but yeah, that was really good actually. He toured. He's, he's he toured in the the English taxi cab. Yeah, <laughs> he actually did more than America. He's actually done half the world. Yeah. Um, he talks about some of that as a reference in this book. Hmm. Um, there's one part he talks about how he's he talks about his face, how he was blessed with such a <laughs> good looks, you know, an, ex, an expression. No, not, not good looks. <laughs> it's such an expression of nonchalance continually on his face. You know, people think that he's arrogant and stuck up. It's, it's yeah. like, I was born this way. There's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, it's, a, it's a typical English head. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. And uh, it's a really good read if if you want want a biography. You want, and this is one thing I've lis- I've listened to a couple of the Michael J. Fox books. I've listened to uh, his book. I've listened to um, uh, Steve Martin's autobiography. I've listened to uh, William Shatner's autobiography. And the one thing they all say is that when anybody asks me for acting tips or how to become an actor. Um, they say just get out there and do it. There's no, you know, none of them went to schools. None of them went to finishing, you know, acting school and things like that. They just grew up in the theatre. Yeah. And yeah, and, just, know, just and, went and, uh, did it. and made it happen. So yeah, yeah, good on them. But uh, yeah, so if you want the, to try an audible book, you can for free. If you go to the AussieTechHeads.com.au webpage and click on the, the link, you'll see it as soon as you get there because it's on every page. So click on that and uh, sign up via that link, please. And then, uh, yeah, because because uh, we get a little bit of a, a little bit of a kickback out of that, and that all helps for the greater cause of the podcast. Yep. But uh, but and just be- a book like that, a book like that is uh, one credit, which is what you get your one credit. So that'll be a free book. Mm. And then at the end of the uh, thirty days, I believe you days. can cancel your subscription if you wish. Yep. Uh, and you get to keep that book. And you can buy books at the retail price at your leisure. Well, if you remain a member, you just get that because you love it so much. You just get the each book at a, a discounted price, heavily discounted price, or free depending on mm. how much you pay. 
But I just uh, just watching this, listening to that Stephen Fry uh, one there. Will I've got a, I've got a title for his next book, a Fry in the Ointment. So <laughs> I think he's one after. I think the one after that is called a Fry Up. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, he's got a play on his name. It's funny. All right, now let's get back to a couple more stories before we go this week. Um, now remember last oh, last week, last two weeks, last month, Optus's little record in the sky and. You know, push it back down to your mobile phone thing. Ooh, what a what a headache that's caused the NRL and all that. But anyway, Optus. That so if you don't know the story, Optus was recording the football or whatever. Pr- pretty much the football is what's arced up, but they're recording the footy. Uh, so you could say on your phone, record the NRL tonight for me, please. And then two minutes after it started, you could then stream it back down to your phone and watch it via your phone. Now, the NRL and the AFL, they didn't like this sort of stuff, and they're saying, oh, it's breaching our copyright because, you know, Telstra's paid billions, blah, blah, blah. Optus took it to court, Optus won. Then last week, uh, went back to appeal court. Then the uh, the NRL uh, franchise or the NRL consortium won, and now Optus is going to appeal. So they've decided to appeal, the good little Optarians. Speaking at the Telco's um, uh, full results today... Or this week, Mr. O'Sullivan, the Optus chief executive, confirmed the company would appeal the decision of the High Court of Australia. Australian consumers want legitimate access to content on any device, regardless of the genre, and we want to continue making the latest technologies available to Australians to meet this demand. This is a very important public policy issue that needs to be determined by the highest court in the land to give clarity to both consumers and the industry. I'm yeah. sorry, but I can just see a whole heap of people sitting around a ra- round table with beer steins. Hurrah! <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> I know. It's like, it's, it's Optus has taken the moral ground, a stand for society. They've taken it upon themselves to spend another billion dollars in taking this matter, this, this, this terrible, terrible copyright infringing beast to the court just for the sake of the... The, the footy loving for the sake of the people the footy loving people <laughs> of the country good on you Optus good on you I love you I love you for it now, you, now you've become Sam Newman or <laughs> <laughs> alright so yeah well uh, let's hope that they do something good <laughs> because like well, I don't think there's an issue I think um, Telstra could have done it <laughs> but they didn't anyone know? could so, yeah exactly if Telstra did it no one would have said anything yeah well they own the rights I suppose but but you look, the, the Optus is not just making it freely available. You've actually got to have the plan. You you can they're making individual copies for every person that asks for it. Yeah, um, you and, know, and I mean, mm. it's basically it's like saying, "Are oh, there?" You know, I don't know. Do, do you have the ability? I don't have an IQ, so I'm not sure. But can you stream um, from an IQ? Because no. it'd be the same as that, wouldn't it? Where you're paying for the service, you're paying to watch the pay TV channel. You're paying for the IQ box to be able to record it. Well, then, should you be able to do to be able to stream that? You know. Yeah, uh, I don't think you can stream from the IQ box. Um, no. So you can't. And hello, we've got we've got a third person. He's coming. To, in. He's coming to the end of the show. He's heard the MBN stories. He's. <laughs> he- <laughs> <laughs> oh, look who it is! How you doing, Eric? I'm well, gentlemen. How's it going? Yeah, good, thanks. Oh, so you made it for the last couple of seconds, unless you got some stories. I got nothing. <laughs> good. <laughs> just as One I expected. Thing just off stands out in that story is they, you know, the talk that they're going to go to the, uh, they're going to appeal a decision to the High Court of Australia. And just in case you're not sure what the High Court of Australia is, um, it's the highest court in the land, <laughs> according to the description. <laughs> So they they sort of cover themselves just if you, in case you're not quite sure. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Now, um, this is one of the last stories. Well, it probably is the last story of the night. It's all about Facebook. Now, look, the stories were pretty rare this week. Um, but we've got, I've got, I pulled this one out for you just to have a little, oh, now the internet's slow. Eric, Eric's come on, everything's stuffed up. No, no, it doesn't. Oh, it's I'm always just, my fault. I'm just joking. <laughs> but uh, Facebook is getting its own app store for all devices, all platforms, all prices. Facebook is launching a new app center, a place to find social web, desktop, and mobile apps, and not just Facebook apps. The app center will bring Facebook's 900 million user base, 
All the best in iOS apps, Android apps, web apps, mobile web apps, and even desktop apps. Ooh. Mm. Well, that's a bit of a big call by them, unless Apple's approved them to sell their apps outside of the App Store, which they don't. You can't buy any other apps unless you jailbreak your phone. Well, maybe they're just going to link to the App Store. Maybe. Well, if that's the case, that'll work. Mm. But, yeah, it seems to be that everyone's getting all of a sudden, they're all everyone's getting excited about they, they need an app search engine, isn't it? Like, they're all... Yeah, I think from reading into it a bit further, um, I think the way it's going to work is say you're playing um, Words with Friends on Facebook, for example. Then you can click on that and it will take you to the Words with Friends, Android app, the iOS app, the paid app, the Zynga app. You know, So I think it's going to be, it's going to be a search engine, but I think it's going to be um, a glorified link bait. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably. App developers are today being asked to go to Facebook and create an app detail page with descriptions and screenshots, just like they do for Google Play or iTunes App Store. Creating these pages is a requirement for being listed in the App Center. So no, no, uh, no real idea of when that's going to get launched. Because that's what, you know, you've just created an iPhone well, app, you've just created right. an Android app, you've just created the thing for the iTunes store, now you've just got to just create something for Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Where do I start? Yeah. That's right. I'm still waiting for the Facebook phone. Remember that rumor about a year <laughs> there, ago? There, yeah. It's been a couple of them. Um, the, the, yeah, brought out by have, Facebook, though. Oh, not brought out, but there's been a couple that have been basically Facebook orientated they're pretty much everything is based on facebook and they just don't work oh look here who wants a, a phone just to have facebook on it yeah who wants that, <laughs> yeah, I'd like wants a, that? I'd, yeah yes all right well did you have anything eric now that you've, you've come in did you did you have anything important? no mate just a funny joke yep. journalist says to plastic surgeon what can you do about julie gilliard plastic surgeon says i'm a plastic surgeon not a heart surgeon <laughs> i'm not god all right. Yeah, that's right. Well, that reminds me just quickly too. Anybody who uses the uh, Instagram app, they still uh, haven't figured no. out how to let you do a six by four photo yet. But they have added uh, slide and shift, which is basically if you take a, the easiest way to describe it is if you take a photo from down view on something, you can basically turn it into a miniaturized looks like a model, which is pretty neat. Um, I've only been using Instagram for a few weeks. Just to try it, it's not really something that interests me that much, but it's handy. You take a really bad photo and it turns into not a half bad one, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I'm not into it much. I've used it, but I just stopped using it. I, mm. I stopped using it very quickly as soon as I, reali I realized I couldn't take a normal 6 by 4 photo and I had to crop every photo I took. As soon as I realized that, I stopped yeah. using it. That's a bit of a hassle, isn't it? That's a standard size, isn't it? 6 by 4 yeah, that's a normal photo yeah. size. Normal uh, <laughs> Harvey Norman get me prints for 30 cents of print. Size. Eight cents, yeah. Eight, Eight cents, cents, whatever. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, up, you got your iOS updates today, Eric? Yes, mate, you? Yes, and your Lion update? Yes, indeed. Oh, mate, you're on top yep. of it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I am on top. Did you have a look where we're streaming live into the Google Plus? Yes, mate, and uh, if you click on it, it'll give you – I was watching it on the YouTube link as well. Oh, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah. And, and what was the quality coming out all right, was very it? Good, very good, yeah? very good. Yeah. The YouTube quality is actually better than the Hangout quality. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'd be pulling it straight from the back end, so... Yeah, that's right. There's no, all, no back and we're forth. Seeing, we're seeing the start and the end of the product. They're grabbing it right in the middle where it's at its, at its best. Mm. Yeah, oh, correct. That, oh, that, oh, look at that. There we go. Oh, you've done it again. <laughs> What's that? I zoom into got... the wrong thing. There we go. I just go. I back just in. wonder if you, it'd be good if you got a, a, a um, what you call a constant embed link, so you could send people to the same thing every week. Yeah, look, there's an embed thing in this Google Plus, but I'm pretty sure it changes. I'll, I'll, I'll investigate that. Look, at... no, no, the the uh, the Google Plus Hangouts stay the same. It will constantly be once you name it, it will be that same name. It's like the uh, Google Plus. Um, talk back tech hangout it's the same every time right and so just so does everyone know that I, we do have a google plus page so if you do if you if everyone goes to that and then we can and instead of streaming it through mine we might start streaming it through the aussie tech head page as well 
So uh, go go there. Yes. And um, yeah, good stuff. Don't forget the radio. The radio, Will's working on hard on the radio. The flash play will be up soon. And it makes it a lot easier than downloading the playlist before you before you actually get to hear it. But mm. um, well, that's what I was going to uh, say before. Look, if anyone's out there and they want their show, if you've got a podcast, you want your show on the radio, just give us a tinkle and we can slip it in there somewhere. And it hasn't got to be, you know, technology specific. It can be anything that's interesting, really. Yeah. Nothing rude and crude or racist or derogatory. Well, that's why but, the fat's um, not on there, you see. That doesn't <laughs> leave much. Does yeah, but uh, chewing the fat's got to come off the air then. <laughs> but uh, now you all remember Mark. You all remember Mark? Who I hear you saying? Yes. Well, you know, you know Mark. He's... Mark, you mean the one who rang me at 2 o'clock? In the morning on Skype the other day. Yeah. Oh, did you answer? <laughs> oh, good God. No, I just noticed a missed call. Yeah, that's because he <laughs> DJs till six in the morning. That's, <laughs> that's you know, right. He thinks that he thinks everyone's on his bloody time. But um, <laughs> but yeah, but anyway, he's doing his own little podcast. He's done a few, quite a few little episodes of that. Uh, that's on the radio as well. It's, he just sits around and talks to a few musicians that, uh, from, that he knows through his walk in life and from people that play at Waxies and... And you know, just talk mm. about life and the universe and, uh, and a few not songs. A bad, not a bad show, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's the den. Um, I know it's available on the radio. It will be once I finish uploading it. I don't know if he's got it on. Has he got it on iTunes? It is yet? on iTunes. It is. Cool. It's uh, up to episode 16 on iTunes and it's the den. And to differentiate it from the other ones, I think maybe up there, it's by mdjradio.com. That's the artist. That's the author of it. So if you guys want to mm-hmm. look for that, you'll find it. It's just, uh, you'll find it, you'll find it. Um, yeah, so he's also, I think he also does it on YouTube, but it's just, it's, there's no video, it's just audio. So, um, yeah, yeah. so. It's and all, on and YouTube, but it's just audio. I don't know why he bothers. Yeah, so it's, it's in the iTunes, but it's also on the radio. And he's also had a one terabyte Western digital hard drive crash and lost everything, apparently. So, Mark, feeling, feeling your pain, feeling your pain. That'll, that'll learn you. Mm. I sent him the crash Obviously plan link. back up. No, I don't think the crash plan link, so hopefully he'll take my advice for next time. But uh, but can you, Eric, I don't know if you know or not, but it's probably too late. He's probably formatted the guts out of it by now anyway. But uh, can you, like, do a spin ride on an iOS X formatted drive? Yep. You can, spin ride only works on Windows drives. But can uh, you put the drive, no. plug it into a... I've done, I've done Mac. I've done Mac. Uh, you have to boot it off a PC. And... Um, yeah. Yeah. If it's attached to a PC, it'll work. That's right. Yeah. But it won't. You won't be able to do it because it'll only run on a Windows. Yes. But if you if you yeah, boot, you know. boots into Linux. But if you slave it into a a, a PC, you, sh- you you can do it. Yeah. It depends how the drive's been formatted. Some drives cater for Mac OS and um, Windows file system, whatever it's called. Right. And some drives are Mac specific, in which case yes, nothing can read it except the Mac, unless you reformat it as an FAT or an NTFS, in which well, case spin, you're going to lose everything. So Spinrite um, reads it at, at bit level anyway. It doesn't care what format or what data is on there, even if mm. it's, it doesn't well, care. That's what I thought. It, it just recovers whatever it can. Yeah. So I suggested that, but I think he's already formatted the, the backside out of it and it's probably... Oh, but, look, he could have got something off that. Even Norton's file recover stuff works fairly well. Yeah. I reckon you could have got something, but you, you would have spent a fair bit of time doing it. But uh, and just oh, be- you run it overnight. You just go to bed. Yeah, yeah. And just before we go, uh, yes, jo- hi Joseph. We got an email from Joseph through the week. Said last week's podcast audio was a bit off. So apolog- apologies for that, everyone. Ah, oh, Joseph, bloody clean your ears out. It was <laughs> fine. <laughs> he said it. Was, no, he's giving me time codes and everything. So oh really? Yeah, he said it was. Clip- oh, Joseph, clipping. this is um, Solar Car Man. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So, um, so it might have been, yeah, it was clipping in a few places. So apologies for that. We'll, we'll have to, uh, hopefully this week hasn't come out the same. So please, Joseph. I'll have to blame you for that one then. Yeah, blame me. That's always my fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyone else got anything you want to talk about before we go? No. Anything I'm good. More? I'm just, I'm just a uh, bloody Johnny, Johnny come lately, mate. Yeah, the ring in tonight. The ring in, that's <laughs> right. All right, take, well, the glory, take the glory after you all guys have done all the hard work. That's right. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, then. That's that's going to do us, I think. Good stuff. All right. Good thank stuff. you, Will. Thank no you. No problem. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, and give me a half a thank you. Thank <laughs> <and> you. <laughs> 
<laughs> Not an F you, a thank you. <laughs> yeah, we'll get we'll give Eric a pixie clap for coming on. <laughs> give, me a, give me a golf clap. <laughs> Mm. All right, so we'll see you next week. Uh, look, the the Google Plus stream seemed to have worked. I can't, obviously, I'm not going to start looking at it because the system will probably blow up. But uh, but if anyone else in the lounge, if you had a look, yeah, let us know how it went. Eric said it was quite successful. So no, it looks all right. Good. The good thing is you don't have to upload this to YouTube anymore. It's done. No, I know. I'll have to get the uh, I'll have to get all the the start and end credit like titles and that, and just do them live, and then I won't have to do it with Jack. Go well, see, you, know, you can edit your videos in YouTube. You go to YouTube and there's those advanced tabs. You can do all that in oh, there now. Oh, yes. You nice, can level out nice. the audio. You can fix up the, the saturation and all that sort of stuff. So, pff. Nice. Bye-bye, Vegas. <laughs> all right. Good stuff. Okay. We've got to go. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, once again, Glenn, Eric, or Will at AussieTechHeads.com.au. Uh, find us on Twitter. We've mentioned that before. We've all got Facebook pages. I, I guess they're all public. Uh, Eric, are you public or you're not public? No, mine's mine's private. There you go. We'll I'm go. public. I can use all the stalkers I can get. Mine's public, but you'll <laughs> but you'll get refused because I'm a, I'm like that. But no, but have a look on. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I bring up Facebook? <laughs> No but idea. Facebook, Aussie Tech Eds, uh, facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds. There you go. Join it up there. Uh, until next week, uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks for your emails. Don't forget the Britney Spears CD I've still got to give away. <laughs> me. Please, me. Me, me. <laughs> oh, me, please, me. And if you want that, please uh, just send us in an MP3 review or put a video review of something up on YouTube. Let us know what the link is. Send us a review. I'll tell you what, it's going to be the first one that does and gets this CD. So if you love Britney even Spears... If it's, even if it's a really bad review. <laughs> well, even if Do a review of the Britney CD. I'll tell you, here's another one. Send in a really nice, clean joke. All right. It, Send something in. Either the best in. review or the best joke gets it. But that's not, that can't be an email. It's got to be an audio. It's got to be an audio visual. Audio joke. Yeah. Audio joke. Yeah. Audio visual. Send it in. Let's let's go. And and a, a Britney Spears <laughs> CD can be yours. All right. Good stuff. Uh, Till next week. It's a goodbye from all of us. Bye-bye. See ya.